Well, hi, good morning. Welcome to my shop. Hey, look at that. Big, big moose. You know, there's a lot of moose uh, not far from here at all. Um, I live in too much of, it's too urbanized where I am in farmland, but if you just go for a, uh, say, a 30-minute drive, you'd be in areas where these guys are really, really common. I think the WWF must be World Wildlife Fund something like that. But here's the part of this that sort of surprised me. I just found this in my house. It must have been my folks, I guess. Well, it's not from Canada. It's from Sweden. But that's a Linda Hammer. Linda Hammer of Sweden. That's a Swedish moose. Okay, he's got to go. <laughs> no Swedish moose anywhere near me. But I will show you what I found. Let's see. I ended the last video lamenting about one of these tubes being bad, a number 26. I'm wondering if I had any. Turns out I have some. <clears throat> I was a little bit floored as I dug through my box of very old tubes. I got four of them. I got four 226s here. They look for sure like they came out of the uh, out of the, out of one radio. Somebody's pulled them out and hung on to them. It's kind of a set. And the real giveaway is they all have 26 written on them. There they are. And line. Okay, so I'm going to test these guys in my tube tester. First off, once again, uh, the old tester comes forth. Cheapers, maybe I'm the old tester here. Tube 26. Okay, first of all, 226. Let me just check the number 26. D 67 1.5. I think that's where it's still set. 67 1.5. It's a little dark in my shop right now. In you go. Okay, first of my 26s. Power on. Yeah, I should be I should be short testing these for sure before I do any more. No, no short. Again, I have no idea how long it's been since this tube was ever uh, used. It's lighting up. Very good. Give it a test. Whoa. Way over. What did that indicate last time? That indicated I had things set wrong. Actually, it indicated I had mis misinterpreted the tube type. I'm just going by a sticker somebody wrote on. But, you know, I can see inside them. They all look exactly like a 26. So. This could be wrong. 67, 1.5. Okay, well, she's ranking right up there as an excellent tube. Let me put this one over here now. That way I'm, I have had an organized approach to forgetting what I've done. There. In you go. No. these very carefully when the uh, filament is, is, is hot because it's probably more prone to uh, damage. And this one doesn't seem to be lighting. Point. 
point here. But I think I got a bad one. The base is a little loose on it. Okay, I put the bad one back over here. The apparently bad one. Okay, that one's warming up inside. Now, admittedly, this is a very, <coughs> excuse me, simple tester. But you see, it's been able to weed out this guy. Let's put him back in. Just let's give him more. Let's give him more hope. More hope. You know what? It's heating up this time. Look at that. You know what I mean? Everybody deserves a second chance. It's actually me who got the second chance there, isn't it? Four good tubes. Hey. Four very good tubes, in fact. That's quite a find. We'll try the radio with an additional new tube. I think I'm going to put these over here where they cannot make it to the ground. Even under the influence of a cat paw, should that occur. I'll bring this guy out here. So we're going to pop in one of those tubes, any one will do. Let's pop in this one. Okay, you can see a change in the style of the globe. Now these are older versions of the tube. This is not as old. Okay. We're all set here, except uh, no antenna connected. So this might be the first time we've got a string of tubes here that a signal can actually get through from start to finish. Okay, so external antenna on, everything ready to go. Me too. Oh right. Uh, so I do uh, I do my own projects in the evening, household stuff, and that's what I was definitely doing. This gives me a chance to show you something here. Um, this is a three-prong device with a three-prong plug. This ex extension cord has only two prongs, but besides that, it's coming from an isolation transformer. There is no uh, earth ground being brought forward here. And when I plug this in, the ground plug neatly misses it. So even though you see a three-prong plug here all the time, it's not. Okay, it's a two-prong plug. I better plug it in. After all that talk. I'm putting in some uh, LED lighting in my kitchen and I was using this to verify that the power drain was, was as low as it seemed because the little LED bulbs were getting pretty warm. So, uh, okay, we're ready to go here. Power on this time. There we go. Very bright dim light. I'm back down to just one dim bulb at the moment. And it's granting 70 volts at the uh, less than 70 volts on the cord here. That's ridiculously low. So let's jump it up now. We'll take it up to
point. So I believe the volume control is set maximum, which means there's little resistance in the antenna line. Sure doesn't sound like a radio, does it? Now, can I verify like this guy? No, it doesn't seem to be heating up again. This tube is not heated, so there is something amiss with that tube. Let me pop it out. sound mechanical. Sounds like an electrical discharge breakdown. Here we go. Okay, so heated, heated. They're all heating up. All showing. trying to send uh, Morse code here. I thought for a moment there when I turned the light off, the situation changed. So, I'm not hearing anything. Let's tune a bit. Better turn on my signal generator because this isn't going well. Like I say, the person who bought this radio heard it work. By the way, my signal generator, um, the output of the generator itself is 50 ohms, but at the end of these wires it's 300 ohms or so impedance, maybe a little more even. Just so you know. So I was able to get a signal in before, um, but I'm going to start like uh, by injecting it further up in the radio, I'm going to start right on here. more problems. baby. Oh, suddenly it works. Uh, I don't know. Boy, oh boy, I got pieces, pieces of equipment here that are giving up the ghost. Okay, so it's set to 750 and the radio is uh, 900, 800, right in this area. I sure don't hear anything. Maximum signal into the radio. Okay, now finally, for the first time, we got something going all the way through this radio. Does it ever sound terrible? So the volume control just knocks it down right at the end here. Let's jump the volume control. about the antenna connection. Uh, I, I think this volume control... Oh. oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so this control over here is discombobulated. When I look on the schematic, this control seems to be right in the antenna circuit. Now, 
perhaps somebody's rewired this so that this control is abandoned now and it's straight over. On the other hand, maybe this broken control is the end of where the signal gets to when you feed it in this wire. Kind of weird. The, the antenna is kind of over this way. This is the start of the radio. You would kind of think this sort of control would be positioned over here too. It wouldn't run wires all the way over here and then all the way back, but who knows, right? So let's turn down the signal generator. So we're putting in a, a strong signal. Seven fifty. If I look straight on here, well, seven fifty is right there above my finger, so it's really, really close. Now, is this aligned? How, how can we tell? Inject the signal just along the way. Bing, bing, bing. See what happens. Yesterday. Okay, I didn't do anything. How about these uh, resistors here? Just looking for anything at all that might. Good over here. Yeah, there's definitely something going on with this. Either the tube. say about that. Plus it's very garbled. It, uh, the, you know, I can hear the thousand hertz tone very faintly in there. But it's very garbled. So it sounds to me like there's some AC mixed in with it. Like 60 cycle AC or something of that sort. Uh, let's do some dumb things. I'll take out these uh, Pop these resistors out here. Should deaden the uh, radio. Deaden me. Uh, it'd be nice if I had like a fuse puller. I don't have such a such a tube, such a thing. Stick my fingers in here. Huh. Oh, oh, don't. <laughs> Excuse me while I throw everything around. Hear it slowly fade out. So I think that was the biasing on the tube uh, drifting away, a capacitor discharging and the bias disappearing. Let's put it back in. That would be my interpretation. Uh, if we pull this one out. the one that says two but reads three and a half. And you might say, well can I just put an ordinary resistor in there? Why am I using these? Uh, this is the way high, high, like a precise high resistances were made back then. And since you're going to try a few of them, they made them very ruggedized in the cartridge form, form so you could plug them in and pop them out. Yeah, you could put an ordinary resistor in there if you want. of high impedance circuits here.
killing the modulation on the signal. Let me just hear the hum now. I'll take the signal right off. And you still hear a hum. So now you're hearing the output, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, amplifier, the power amplifier. And if it's given nothing, it makes no sound. Listen to it, it's dead silent. So the funny sounds are coming from the radio here. See if there's any funny tuning things here. The same signal shows up somewhere else. Oh. So we are tuned now to essentially, I think, double the frequency. We're up around 14. This is around 14. So we're at double the frequency and it's able to receive it again. the 700. Let's go up, let's take it up to around 14, see what happens. Right in here somewhere. Okay, so what are we actually tuned to? We're tuned to about well, 1280. 1280, let's go a little. Oh, there we are. To work a lot better up this frequency. Wait a minute, I turned it up. I turned up my signal generator. Let me turn it back. No, it's about the same thing. So the, the dial accuracy, if you like, or the linearity of this is fine. And why would it change? This is a very, very mechanical sort of thing. This capacitors are what they are, the coils are what they are. Uh, they don't exactly wear out. And that's pretty much what this radio is. A bunch of bunch of capacitors. Something's very sensitive in here. Okay, the signal getting louder and quieter too. Something mechanical, some mechanical uh, connection. So you got the pin, pins on the tubes. You've got these resistor connections. I've got this uh, shaft here, which which needs to be grounded. I can see it's it's solidly grounded in here, properly. Um, what else could it be? What else could be loose? What else is making a Let's try and pick up a real radio station for fun. So I will tune this thing to 640. That's the strongest station around. Okay. 640. Okay, 
signal generator is putting out 640. The radio is now tuned to 640. We'll bypass this first antenna connection. We know what's haunting me the whole time I'm doing this is the owner told me he heard this work. It's just it's just driving me nuts. Let's click on here. Well, that sounds like my antenna, all right. <laughs> hey, that sounds like a radio. radio. Lots of interesting things. This is not a frequency converting radio. This doesn't have a local oscillator. It doesn't have a mixer. It doesn't have any of that kind of stuff. It doesn't have an IF, a fixed IF. It's, it's all tuned. All tuned all the time. Well, that was interesting. That, that, that sound stopping suggests that was the radio itself. Don't know what to think of that. So, so this is going to receive signals here in my uh, shop in a more pure fashion, if you like, with a uh, more modern radio, a super heterodyne radio, because of the frequency conversion that takes place in it and the mixing, the tube that mixes stuff, anything that gets into that mixer tube gets mixed in there with everything. And so you can have very strong noise signals today, like my uh, shop here is full of them. And, uh, those noise signals get into a super headset and before you know it you've just got stuff happening all over the place you can't sort it out it's just too complex I think there are mixing products mixing with mixing products it gets so uh, so balled up because of these very powerful noise signals that exist now in this case with this radio there is none of that mixing going on this is just straight through so whatever's here is coming out of the speaker Except we've already seen that uh, it's sensitive to a, you know, the double double of the tuned frequency will still come through. But not to worry about that. That's a minor thing compared to. Uh, so we can actually listen now to what the noise is really like in here. And you know what? I have another radio in here which is exactly the same style. Believe it or not, this uh, signal tracer is also a TRF radio on purpose. It's a TRF, there's no conversion going on inside there, and yet I can tune the AM band with it. It would be interesting to put that up to an antenna and listen to it. I never never thought of it, but now it really dawns on me, the good idea. So let's just tune this thing and listen to what kind of stuff is on the end of my antenna here. I've already heard some of it. So I'm just going to tune right through, kind of steady, and just listen to the the repetitive fashion of this signal, if there is one anyway. Turn this as steady as I can. Okay, so clearly there's a fade out when you get uh, these capacitors closed. Sensitivity goes down. Not as dramatic as I thought. See now, there's definitely a pattern to this. It would seem that it's most strongest right up here. But as for receiving a signal off the antenna, I mean, you got no no sense here that's going to pick up a station.
could set this to 1580 since it seems to be more sensitive. Now I'm on the wrong end of the band. Well, 1580 would be. This radio doesn't really get there. 1280, 1440, like about 1500 here at the top. So that's 1430. I can't get to 1580 with it. I won't go there. The next strongest station, wow, there's really nothing. You know, 1010. Whew. Down here somewhere. I'd love to hear one radio station coming through here. So. Okay, this is 1150. Fifty. Yeah, that didn't work. Ten fifty. These are all the stronger. This component here, which is discombobulated right now, is, uh, I believe, uh, well, I've looked on the schematic, it looks to me like it's involved in the antenna circuit. But a lot of radios like this, this is a feedback device designed to feed back a little bit of the signal back into earlier stages of the radio and have it come through again. And if you set this just right, you get powerful amplification. If you go a little too far, the whole radio starts squealing and oscillating. So. This was the state of affairs back in the 20s, the how to make a radio sensitive. It's almost like you, you bring it close to a cliff, and on the edge of the cliff, it works really well. If you go a little too far, well, you don't exactly fall off a cliff, but... Well, we're not getting anywhere here like this. Uh, the next loudest signal really is 680, and uh, we've already tried those. Now see, I, I tested all these tubes, they all tested good, the originals, except the one I removed and replaced with this one. I don't really have too much reason to think these are a problem here. Well, let's try injecting the uh, uh, signal generator signal and, and, and move it progressively back as crummy as this kind of is, because it disturbs the radio. Uh, let's give it a go. So we're tuned, let's bring it up, let's tune it to about a, thousand, about a million. Rate, I think it would be right about here. say it was. Okay, so you can hear the signal now, but it doesn't much matter what you do with the uh, tuning. Who knows? Who knows? This might be a dumb, dumb thing to do. We'll 
little sharper there. Okay, so that's a little over a thousand. This is showing a little over a thousand. Okay, doesn't seem to be disturbing it so much. Now it's a little distorted, not much louder. The tuning point seems to have moved a little bit. Got quieter. I think there's an alignment issue with this too. Let's check that more carefully. Max is there. Wow. Max is same. I mean, that's all because of the first two. start with those. You know what, I've been running this radio on low voltage too. How low? goes into oscillation here. Hmm. Totally. Oh my god, everything's making a difference. <coughs> we are now tuned to about 900. really strong stuff. Let's go on the antenna here. Strong stuff. Let's try 680. 680, I believe, is 640 and 680. Let's try them again. Where are we here? 750. Five seventy. 
somewhere in here. Okay, so that's 740, and it's actually a station there. We don't want to go to 680. That's the 680 carrier. 640 is another strong one, just just below here. Come on, man. Just play me. Okay, this is 640. jump from the antenna to this. It's much louder. That's the regular antenna connection there. Nothing at all. But when I skip a little bit into the radio here. Remember where 
where the window, how this works. I believe the window is pointing straight at the flat here. Uh, it's not, it's not up here somewhere. It's down here. So this would be what you would see. Five fifty. Five. 70, 80, 90, 1, 10, 20. I don't know what these, these Okay, so the graduations here are just on a, uh, uh, a decade scale. They don't mean anything. So you can't count these divisions between them. So, you know, pretty close though, eh? 550, 590. How close do you want this to work? Not bad. Now, alignment issues. Alignment issue. Listen very carefully as I tune through it. strong and there seems to be one smooth peak, but that's not a guarantee of anything. There we go. Okay. Better set of tubes, better performance. And uh, so I got to think about this a little bit now. Let's quiet down. Um, so we've got some kind of hum thing going on in there. You can hear a hum in the speaker right now too. It's just maybe there may be a hum all through this thing. It would be very, very hard to trace it down and track it down. It's everywhere it's coming out of the power supply. Probably the case. Um, the garbly sound uh, could be because of that hum. The hum could be hum could be on the filaments in here. All kinds of things could be out of sorts that would cause that garbly hum modulated sound that we're listening to. There's lots of possible issues in here, I think. Um, so probably the best thing to do uh, from here is just start more standard troubleshooting, start with an audio signal, work back to the, de the detector, feed a signal into the detector, see what it sounds like coming out, just keep working, working back and forth in the radio until, until it highlights something. <laughs> to me, it may mostly highlight the fact that, that I don't know what I'm doing. No, that won't be true. You know, how familiar can you be with a radio like this? Uh, how often does it, even a person like me you know, confront a radio like this? This would be about number seven or eight. So that, that's a pretty good number of these that I've worked on. And I've had impressive results from a couple of them. A couple of them, you just turn them on and they worked. This one almost works. Okay. That's enough for me to go away and spend my day thinking some more. So thanks a lot for watching, and uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow.